we are looking at the data set 2 which consists of grain size data from 2 different phases and uh, we are doing the rank based uh, properties and uh, their uh, representation. So, let us continue uh, and next what we want to do is to do a histogram plot of this data uh, for both the phases. So, this is uh, phase 1, so it should say phase 1. And we want to do a histogram plot of phase 2 data from uh, grains of phase 2. Uh, so, let us do that and then call it as So, this is uh, the same information we have seen it uh, several times now. So, both peak somewhere around 24 and both have a tail only to the left. And uh, this is a much longer tail and uh, relatively uh, probably fatter tail uh, as compared to this, right. So, this is what we have been noticing and uh, so uh, you can clearly see here in these pictures how it looks like. Uh, so, okay. so, you can do the box and whisker plot also. Um, so, we just need to change. And let us let us make it uh, horizontal true. Okay, I have to do this again and I have to do it for phase 2. You can clearly see that these data sets are really, really different from what we have been seeing. So, this uh, point is generally the median value and you can see that in both cases uh, the, mm, the data point that occurs maximum number of times is actually the last value and then you have tail and uh, here the, the tail is much longer and here there are lots of outliers you know this is uh, like the, uh, the the box is supposed to be second and third quartile and beyond this is supposed to be fourth quartile there are no data points uh, that is because there is no tail on that side at all. And on this side you have one but lots of data points are lying outside of that um, and, and here you know everything all these points are outside. So, uh, the the second and third quartile quantile and there is no fourth quantile everything is sort of collapsed here right so this box plot also gives you more information about how the data looks okay so now let's try to get the properties of these data sets right so let's get the mean of the two So, mean is 24.1 and 23.4, okay. Now, the standard deviation will tell you this values we have already seen, um, sorry. And uh, so, you can see that uh, for 1 it is 24.1 plus or minus 0.4 and for 2 it is 23.4 plus or minus 2. So, so it is not surprising because most of the values are here and the average turns out to be here. Of course, the standard deviation is much larger as expected because the spread is much higher. So, it is 5 times the standard deviation and variance will be correspondingly different. because variance is just square of this uh, uh, standard deviation. So, it is 2 times 4 and it is uh, 0.4 and 0.16. So, so, this is just square and so mean uh, and, and then you can get median values that we already know from the box plots. And 
So in both cases the median value is 24.3, I mean that is what you see here, both cases just gives you 24.3, okay. So um, quantile, again the information is already there from the box plot, is getting them in terms of numbers. And you can see that the spread is here from 11 to 24.3 and here it is. Uh, and you can see 50 percent, 75 percent, 100 percent everything falls in this 24.3 and so also here and uh, there is some slight uh, distribution here. I mean in fact here 25 percent onwards everything is here only. The first quantile uh, is uh, slightly different value. Here only uh, from the 50 percent so that is the uh, third, fourth quantile they are all on the same value, okay. So this is what we have seen also. And as we did earlier, of course, uh, uh, let us uh, plot everything uh, in one go. These plots are useful, okay. So I am going to change this a uh, little bit instead of uh, um, All right. So let us do this for the second data set also. Second data set you can see 1 standard deviation, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. on the one side because uh, after the, uh, on the on the plus side there is nothing. So uh, let us do that. Okay, so there is some problem with the command, okay. Okay, so you can see that uh, we marked the mean and we marked the median and we marked 1, 2 standard deviation, etc. Uh, but here we, are, we have been marking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so up to 6 standard deviations you have to go before you actually take all the data into. Um, uh, into account. So this is a really large spread and that is what is shown in these figures also, okay. So you can see that, okay, so somewhere here, um, th this red is median and black is uh, mean uh, and about the black, uh, the first standard deviation is the green and uh, second is blue. Uh, in this case, you do not even see the blue, you see the blue. And then this uh, uh, light blue and, and uh, purple and yellow and uh, yeah, I do not know what this color is. But uh, so there are several standard deviations from the mean on one side you have to go before you encompass all the data points, okay. So, so we ha and, and this information we have also seen in the case of quantile. So to summarize, we have looked at grain size distribution, we have looked at two different cases, one was very straightforward, we just had the data for one phase uh, because it was a single phase material. In the other case, it was a two phase material and we pulled out data and we separated it into phase one and phase two and we carried out the same analysis. The, there are three things that we did, one is just plotting that is uh, stem and leaf or dot chart or the scatter plot. Second one is to prepare rank based properties that is by doing some analysis like cumulative distribution, uh, box plot, histogram plot and things like that. And uh, the last one is to prepare summary based uh, reports like uh, mean, median, standard deviation, variance, quantiles, etc. And of course we tried to put the scatter plot along with the summary based reports to get better handle on how the data looks like. Uh, and it is very clear from this data that if you are having something like grain size, uh, it is better not just to report the mean and standard deviation, but also some information about the distribution. And probably the best way to represent the distribution is by giving the histogram plot. And so that is also common, 
histogram or cumulative uh, distribution plot gives an idea about how the data looks like in these cases, how the grain size spread is in these cases. So, we will um, continue with uh, more of the analysis uh, and uh, this example and the previous example is to show that sometimes in materials uh, uh, science and engineering you come across uh, data sets uh, which are to be represented as distributions not just uh, in terms of simple numbers. Um, so, thank you.